Well, that sort of leads us into the second question. So one of the issues that we encounter, particularly here on social media, is the problem of violence in the Hebrew Bible. The God of the Old Testament appears to either command or perform violent actions that we would consider today to be immoral. A common apologetic to this charge of immorality is to say that these stories of violence or genocide were merely hyperbolic. Could you speak to the violence either committed or commanded by God in the Hebrew Bible and how it should be understood in its context? Were these merely hyperbolic uh, statements or does the narrative expect the reader to understand that these commands of violence and genocide were genuine and from God? You know, it is, I suppose, uh, a complex question in its way. You know, it's very, first of all, uh, I mean, it is not the case that God came down and told them to do these things. You know, when you get a divine command in the Bible, it is some human being telling you that this is what God commands. And whenever you get that, ancient or modern, it's always at the very least, mixed in with human motivations, human interests, and sometimes entirely the product of human motivations and human interests. Now, the, the short piece example you see, is the conquest story. Now, the conquest story, if you read through beginning with Deuteronomy with the command that when you go into the land, you know, leave no one alive, practically. And then the book of Joshua gives you the impression that Joshua actually did that. Now, the book of Judges, as I'm sure you know, is much more ambivalent about it. It gives you long lists of people that they didn't destroy, but it blames them for not destroying them. Now, the, the modern consensus for what it's worth is that the violent conquest of Canaan didn't occur. Now, the main argument on that is archaeological. We would expect to find, you know, a whole series of places that had been destroyed at the appropriate time, beginning with Jericho, the showpiece. Mm. And as of now, the archaeologists do not find these. I think there are an archaeologist or two, maybe, who still think Hatzor may have been destroyed destroyed by the Israelites, but the majority view, uh, Bill Deaver, you know, is probably the most forceful and articulate archaeologist of his generation, was also very much opposed, you know, to the minimalists, to the people mm -hmm. who wanted to deny the historicity of a lot of the Old Testament. But at the same time, he says, you know, these things just didn't happen. Uh, now, does that relieve the problem? You see, I think not. Maybe it makes us feel a little bit less squeamish if we don't have to imagine that they actually pulled Canaanite women out of bed and slaughtered them. Uh, but still, it's there in the text, presented as a divine command. And then, you see, it stands as, uh, as a paradigm. The danger of putting things in writing, as we all know all too well, is that people will make of them of what you have written what they will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, in this case, you see, it isn't really difficult to use those texts as a kind of license for violence. And this has happened repeatedly. You know, it happened in the, uh, the spread of... Christianity in this country. It uh, has happened in South Africa. It's happened in happening in modern Israel. Um, so you know the, those texts are not innocent that way. Is it just hyperbole? I think not. Um, you know, there's a, a philosopher, um, Nick. Um, 
blanking on his name, <laughs> the one who wrote uh, a book on Nick Walterstorff, uh, who has a, you know, makes a nice argument saying how he talked to the, this high school kid who had played a football game and he said, oh, we slaughtered them. To which I say, nice try, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, granted, it was hyperbolic. And, you know, you've studied uh, the Assyriological stuff. They were all hyperbolic. Mm. But to say that they were hyperbolic didn't mean they didn't kill people. Mm. You know, they did what they could and claimed to have done more. Mm. But what you get fairly consistently is the glorification of violence. Now, I mean, this isn't peculiar to the ancient world either. This is, uh, you know, uh, think, think of the Western the movie genre. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you ultimately settle things by violence? That's deeply ingrained. And we just did this past week. What should you do if there are demonstrations getting out of hand? Send in the army. Mm. Well, then it's out the same syndrome. It seems to me. Now, you know, there are exceptions to that in the Bible. Uh, that's the remarkable part. A famous one would be the suffering servant in Isaiah of um, an attempt to make, uh, make suffering redemptive, which then had huge influence in early Christianity. But mind you, early Christianity doesn't altogether dispense with the violence either, uh, because in the end, you end up with the book of Revelation. And Jesus may have been a nice guy the first time, but boy, don't get in his way when he comes back. <laughs> <laughs>